Yo, 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 it's Sandra Deluxe. Welcome to Sandra Delish. Today we're making curry goat. Bah! It's Jamaican celebration food, almost like if you have like turkey dinner or something, but more common. If you want to see how to get the dish, then please stay tuned. So I know Easter is usually reserved for fish and Jamaican culture, but I'm not doing anything for Easter and I'm not seeing any of my family, so I'm like, I'm gonna have some goat. First step in Jamaican cooking, especially with meat, is you always have to wash it, so I'm using some vinegar and water. I give it a pre-rinse with water first just to get any cloudy bits off. As I've said in other videos, just consider it an ingredient you have to wash and just make sure that it is clean. Just giving it some swipes on my hands, but it being very gentle, because the bones are very sharp. After a little rinse, I like to give it a little pat dry with some paper towel, and it doesn't have to be super dry because I'm gonna be pulling it out with tongs and putting it in another bowl. But you don't want it too wet because the seasoning can kind of get soupy at the bottom. You don't really want that. A little bit of wetness is okay, but you don't want it too soggy wet. I'm gonna put some lime in it just to brighten it up a little bit and to help to soften the meat, as well as brighten up the flavor a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with this curry powder. This is a Lala's curry powder. It says on there, heat treated. If you wanna heat up your curry beforehand, so I'm gonna do two kind of doses of adding the curry powder, one to season the meat right quick. I'm doing it a little bit lighter because I'll be adding more later. But just to coat the meat, and I'm gonna put on some black pepper, which adds the slightest amount of heat, which won't matter because we're putting in scotch bonnets, but it gives a nice pepperiness, earthiness. And white pepper, which is so nice with goat. It's a little bit more floral than black pepper, but it goes really well with goat meat. I like to use soy sauce as my salt. I'm not using too much because I'll be using broth later on, which has salt in it. This is what transforms your curry powder into Jamaican curry. Adding allspice or pimento berries, some scotch bonnets. I will be honest, I added probably too much. And then adding your scallions or green onions, cutting them on a diagonal. This was a little bit spicy. I don't cook with scotch bonnets too often, so when I do, I tend to overdo it, but no regrets. I have this little bag that I keep in the freezer of scraps so I can make my own broth. So I'm gonna take the ends of those onions and any shavings from the carrots or other onions, put it in a bag, freeze it. You could boil it down for a few hours. You have really nice broth, but I'm adding quite a few scallions to this. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to help it move around and so it slips around. I'm adding some fresh sprigs of lime and I'm gonna go in with onion. Again, not being too careful about wasting because I'm putting those parts that I'm discarding from the onion, like the skin in that bag, so later on I can make it into a broth. Giving a nice chop to the onion. It's going to melt away because we're cooking it so long, so it's not super serious how small you cut it or how perfect. Then I'm gonna go in and toss it again gently. I'm not trying to bruise up the vegetables too much. I just want everything nice and evenly coated. Now, you could marinate this overnight, which you should do, but because I didn't wanna take two days to make this, I thought instead of using water to add to the curry, I'd add broth, which will give a little bit more of an enhanced flavor. But it is really bomb if you marinate it overnight. I'm gonna separate the veggies and the meat because the veggies will burn before the meat is browned and it's just too much in the pan. So I'm adding a little bit of dry garlic powder to my veggies. They don't need to saute as long, and this is a ginger hack. So instead of cutting off the skin, taking a spoon to kind of scrape it off works amazingly well. You only get a tiny bit of the skin off without taking away too much of the flesh. Any super hard bits you can cut off with a knife, but I like to just scrape it with a spoon and I feel like that is the best way to shave your ginger. I'm gonna cut it into little thin slices afterwards, almost like little hickory sticks so I can get it nice and thin. Again, it will melt away if you cut it nice and thin. It's not nice to take a bite of ginger and blow your palate. So this ginger's a little bit more dry. I have had it for a little while, but I'm like, it's still good and I'm gonna use it. But I'm trying to cut it up pretty small just so that it'll melt away into the pot. Sorry my phone's out the whole time. I was trying to film it so I could make a TikTok of this video afterwards. I'm gonna take some coconut oil and I'm just gonna spoon it in. If it doesn't come off the spoon, then I'll just let my spoon sit on the pan until it gets hot and it'll slide off. 
But I'm using coconut oil because I like coconut oil with goat. And we're gonna start to brown our meat. I had to do this in batches because I did not realize how much freaking goat I got. But I'm going to half brown this first batch because it's gonna continue to brown when I put it in my big Dutch pot. And then the second pot I can brown up a little bit more so it comes up to speed with the second batch. But basically you wanna get that nice golden color. And one of the most important things about this too is that we are activating the curry. So you see how it's getting nice and brown on the bottom? That's when all the flavor is activated. You could add that whole thing of curry powder and it will not taste activated or it'll taste raw. You can use less curry powder if you heat it up first. A lot of people will make a paste first, heat it up, but because I want to brown the meat, seal in the juices and get a little bit more of that flavor on there, I'm browning it afterwards. It was getting a little dry on my second patch, so I added a little bit more of the coconut oil. I'm not using that spoon again, so I just used my tongs that time. And again, just making sure that curry powder is activated and kind of sealed in on the outside of the goat. Then I'm going to transfer the second batch into the pot. This is where I realized this was far too much. Later on, you'll see I'm using two pots. I had to break it up because I didn't realize how much I was buying, as I said before. But now we're gonna activate the curry that's on the vegetables and brown our vegetables just slightly to activate the flavor. This is more so to cook the curry than it is to cook the vegetables because the curry, we added those aromatics like ginger, and garlic we're about to add. Those can burn a little bit quicker and we want everything to cook evenly. So I just wanna lightly toast my ginger and while the onions sweat down and our scotch bonnets become fragrant and our scallions wilt and our thyme gets activated. So one big tip that I feel like has made a difference for me is get a garlic press and get already peeled garlic. It just makes your life so much easier. It is easy to peel garlic but I just hate having my hands smell like garlic because I do my makeup with my hands. Again, if you wanted to rub your fingers on stainless steel, that will take the garlic smell out, but it's just a hassle. I like peeled garlic. Again, I will say I probably put too much scotch bonnets in here, but I like a little spice, you know. This time with the pan, I'm gonna add some hot water, and like I said, I was gonna add some broth. I like the Knorr uh, Bouillon, the home style ones come in a little jelly like that so it's kind of like a bone broth concentrate and you can just melt it with the water I'm basically deglazing the pan adding a little bit more water again if you're using curry powder too I prefer curry powders that don't have flour in it or sugar or salt because you want to add that on your own afterwards this curry powder I feel like has some type of thickening it agent in it because the curry always comes out super thick which is fine because it's very spicy, but that's okay. It was still really delicious. I added a little bit more garlic and fresh thyme because I'm a garlic fiend. Once it comes to a full boil on almost high, I'm gonna cover it and put it on low, start working on our vegetables. We have some russet potatoes. I'm just gonna peel them. Um, we're gonna add these in closer to when they're being done because I'm gonna leave it on simmer for about two hours. The last 45 minutes, I'm going to add my potatoes in. But just, again, a rough chop. I think about how it's going to hold in the fridge more than it is immediately because when you make this much food, like, <laughs> you're probably going to want to store some for later. I'm also going to take some carrots. I'll add those carrot tops and bottoms to my bag that I'm going to use to make stock later on. Just taking off the ends because they're so small and this will be stewed for quite a while. Give those a little bit of a peel and I'll add the peel to my stock as well. Stock bag, sorry. I saw this thick and juicy curvy carrot and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna peel her and put her in too. Giving it a nice big chop. Again, keeping in mind that vegetables will break down in stocks. Now that it's been going for a couple hours, I'm just gonna add in my carrots and potatoes. At this point, you could skim out your pimento or allspice or take out some of those herbs that have dried, but I just thought I'd leave it in today. Again, I just wanted to feel some comfort food and just feel cozy. I didn't want to do the most, just be perfection. I just wanted a nice home style pot of curry goat. I really like curry goat with plain rice or coconut rice, so I'm going to do like a light coconut rice. I have some Japanese rice here. 
just gave it a wash. It says on the package to do one cup to one and a quarter cup of water or something like that, but I usually do one and a third or one and a half. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink salt to that and then a few scoops of the coconut oil. It's just like a plain rice because the curry goat is so flavorful. I don't like anything too overbearing. I just like a really nice absorbent rice. So Japanese rice is my favorite, so that's what I did. I'm gonna give it a stir. Once that comes to a full boil, I'm going to turn it down on low and let it sit there for 20 minutes. Just like with the goat, bring it to a boil. Once it's boiling, cover it, put it on low. So this has been going for now a half hour. I want it to go for another 25 minutes or so, or 15 minutes. There's my second pot because I was being obnoxious and made way too much. And we're gonna get ready to plate it on up. Sometimes I just twist a lid to see how my rice is doing, if it's cooked yet or not. And it was, it's beautiful, it's fluffy, it's fragrant, has hints of coconut. All of our veggies are cooked down, soft perfection, and same with the fall off the bone goat. Oh, it's just so good. Let me know what you guys are eating this weekend because, well, I filmed this a few days ago and that's what I've been having for lunch every single day and by dinner time I just can't anymore because it's hella spicy. But this is so delicious. Goat, also, if you've never had goat before, think of mutton or lamb. It has kind of a similar flavor profile. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I freaking enjoyed. I gotta drop some off at family's house because I made a lot, but I'm gonna eat this. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow. Love yourself, stay hungry, and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care.